Hey everybody, welcome back to some more early morning barking, talking about BPD and MPD by somebody that has both. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and do all the socially things that are scrolling past you on the screen right now. Thank you for doing that. So today's video is about dating a narcissist. A couple of things before we start. This is not an am I dating a narcissist video. I don't know. You might be. That's what you need to do with that is go and look at my videos on MPD markers and work from there. And also, I don't know, it's difficult to assess people. I, I'm not somebody who does that. So I don't know if you're dating a narcissist. That's a different thing. Second of all, when I say a narcissist, what I really mean is a person with MPD. And sometimes I, I get this switched up and it means the same thing, but saying a narcissist isn't really a thing. We're talking about a person with MPD. So who I'm really talking to is the people who are either currently with somebody with MPD or thinking about being with somebody with MPD. There's a lot to decide here. And you're the one that needs to decide it. I can't tell you what you should do or shouldn't do. I can only give you information as to what you should look out for and how these things can be bad for you. When you're dating anyone, you're in a sort of happiness versus unhappiness balance thing. And we're willing to take certain things in exchange for certain other things. And as long as we're generally happy, then we're happy, right? So telling you whether or not you should or can continue to be with a narcissist or someone with MPD, that's really down to your point of balance, isn't it? And also how their behavior as somebody with MPD affects their day-to-day -day life we're all extremely different. And the way the traits that we have as people with MPD affect our day-to-day -day life, affect just how tolerable we are as people. Most of us sort of switch between this grandiose, vulnerable narcissism area. None of us really stay in one. We might be in one more than the other, but there's a flip-flop back and forth. And the way that those traits play out could be something that is just hideous to you, or it could be something you can live with. And it's impossible to predict how those traits are going to play out. I've done videos on the past on narcissistic abuse and some of the things that can affect you. But by no means have I covered all of them because I don't have experience of all of them. And I would certainly encourage you to look into this. There are other channels out there that will talk specifically about the more malignant end of narcissism. The people who are happy to control and hurt. I don't personally have experience of that. I can't speak to it a lot. And I, I don't know what percentage of us will have that. I'm sure plenty of people do. I'm sure that's out there. I've only just thought of it. So it's important to see how their MPD affects them and how it affects you. This is not an exercise for the weak willed. This is not something to just dive into without much thought because there's potential for harm here. And that's what you want to avoid. But for both of you. Because the chances are that the person with MPD absolutely doesn't want to hurt you in the slightest. And to end up doing so would cause them distress as well. I'm not trying to forgive it. I'm just saying, look, this is something where lots of many, several, two people can get hurt. And we want to avoid anybody getting hurt. So this isn't for the weak will, and it's not f for people who don't know what they're looking for. Looking out for signs of being controlled, of 
being lied to, of being misled, of being gaslit, of finding out that things they say aren't true. All those things could come up. And, and worse, I suppose violence is a possibility at the, the worst end. The, the thing with that is I, I can't imagine that the people who suffer greatly from malignant narcissism are particularly nice people to hang around with in the first place. So, I don't know. There's a lot about making sure that you, you this person has niceness within them somewhere. And don't think that you can make that change for somebody. Don't think that you can improve them or whatever. Hope that they're on their own journey. In fact, that's essential. That's one thing that I've not mentioned yet. If we're if if you're talking about being in a relationship with somebody that has MPD, then can we assume that both of you know they have MPD? Because then we're dealing with a completely different beast altogether. Then we're dealing with a self-aware person with MPD. And I would say ideally that this is what you're looking for. You're looking for somebody who can say, I have these problems and I'm working on them. I'm doing these things to alleviate these problems because I know that they're problems. And then you're running the risk of being hurt along the way, I suppose, while this person does the work. These things take time and they don't happen without mistakes and slip ups. But I suppose if you're seeing somebody approach something with the attitude of self-improvement, of getting better, of being more self-aware and dealing with these problems, does that take the edge off things? I, I don't know. I can't say that for you that it does. But it could be a factor in your decision to do or not do something. A lot of this boils down to, I, I can't actually tell you what to do, whether you should or shouldn't do this, whether you should get out of something or not. But you shouldn't live with abuse. You shouldn't live with pain and suffering and unhappiness. And so you shouldn't walk into it knowing that you're walking into it. And if you're in it, you should be able to get out of it, which can, God, I mean, get leaving abuse. We're into something. We're into territory that I, I'm not best suited to discuss. But there are so many little things you need to look out for. Little elements of control that lead to bigger elements of control. Tutting at things looking at things disapprovingly, suddenly not wanting to do particular things, all kinds of little nudges that can move you in a direction and take things away from you that you aren't necessarily eager to give up. And you have to watch for this happening. There are very obvious ways of controlling a person and there are very covert ways of controlling a person that wear them down over time. And people with MPD can be very well versed in both. Look, we can be terrible manipulators as well. Just because we might have a desire to do it doesn't mean that we're good at it. And you might see it coming a mile away and you might laugh at it and say, piss off. You might be that kind of person. You might be very willing and able to deal with that kind of thing. You might be able to put up with that or have enough strength to fight back on the other hand you might not be you might be somebody who a practiced person with mpd can just take control of in which case stay as far away as possible i'm i'm sort of i'm not shy about saying that I understand why it might be better to avoid us. For a lot of people, it can be. And a lot of us might be worth avoiding. But you have to make these decisions yourself based on the individual and based on you. We're not all automatically evil. 
we don't all hate everybody and try to control everybody. We don't, we aren't all looking for weak willed people that we can break and shape to our way. That's not what we're about. Yes, some of us are, and you must look out for this and not get involved with that because that is abusive and it's horrible and it's controlling and it's, it's everything bad, but we're not all like that. So I hesitate to say you should just avoid people with MPD because we need love and we have love to give and we want to not be alone. Basically like everybody else, right? We are as deserving as, of love as everybody else is, but we can't be hurting people. And so it's up to us to not hurt not up to you to deal with being hurt and so you have to assess your particular person with mpd are they gonna hurt you and if they do be ready to say no look i was waiting for this goodbye because you've got to look after you go into a relationship with someone with mpd somewhat selfishly be keeping an eye out for you looking out for you i think maybe that's the key because maybe they won't be looking out for you maybe they go maybe it would, would be better to avoid us altogether eh makes you wonder are we worth the work? Probably down to the individual. Some of us will be, some of us won't be. Is anybody? Oh, God. I'm getting too philosophical now. Dating a narcissist is a complicated thing. Because having MPD is a complicated thing. And it does harm others around us, potentially. Sometimes a lot. And is the risk of that worth the reward of being with that person? That's the decision you have to make. But dear God, don't let yourself be mistreated. Don't let yourself be harmed. Don't let your... Don't let yourself be controlled and changed. Working with somebody who's self-aware is a good place to be in, I suppose. If somebody can come to you and say, look, I have MPD. These are the ways it plays out. This is the way it affects my life. Then you're onto a good start. That's a positive experience. Not somebody who is just an arsehole who you suspect is a narcissist. That, that's not a relationship to get into in the first place. That's an obvious one, right? Because if they don't know they are, then the chances are they're just behaving like the classic narcissist person with MPD. How is that person attractive or nice in the first place? So... First of all, you can do better than that, I think is the best way of putting it. You're worth more than that to start with. Don't don't be attracted to that person. They're an arsehole. Someone with completely untreated, unaware MPD is not going to be somebody that you want to spend time with regularly for long. They might have short-term charm, but the mask will slip very quickly. And even when it's a mask, you can see the effect it's having. You can see the type of person that person is, is being like. And compare that to the behavior of most normal people. But if you're dealing with someone who's self-aware, then it's a different thing. Then if they're moving forward, if they're doing the work, if they're trying hard, to recognize these problems and deal with them, then I would say it's down to you with that one. Maybe it would be worth it. Maybe it would be rewarding. I don't fucking know. Rewarding. Sorry. Bleep that out. I'm telling you whether or not 
to get into a relationship and I I can't really do that can I be aware and go and check out the other videos on MPD traits and markers and stuff like that and look out for some other channels as well there are some good ones heck talking about narcissistic abuse is a favorite thing of YouTube to do I'm sure you'll have no problem finding the kind of thing you should be out there looking for um it's very widely talked about just remember we're not all like that is all I would say I don't know maybe this is a trickier topic than I thought about before I started I even made notes and I barely looked at them this is the quality of video you can expect here. Anyway, I'm going to shut up because that's usually the best thing to do. And I will see you later. Bye.